Sonata then came out in a in an awesome, awesome all white outfit, looking like a boss, to help his buddy Naito. Jay White came out, and for a second, you almost thought he was gonna turn on evil, but Ibushi uh, ended up busting out, and he hit a beeline to Jay White and took out Jay White. Almost took his head right off with an awesome lariat. But the actual match was kind of a who cares. It was heel crap, low blows, referee bumps, pretty much everything that we see. And I wrote down, it's basically a copy and paste WWE clusterfuck. I mean, I would not be surprised to see this on a WWE B pay-per-view. It was sad. These two are two extremely talented, awesome guys. And I still love them both. This doesn't change my opinion of either of these guys. I think it was really bad booking, and I gave it a C minus. I don't know the last time I gave a Naito match a C minus. Hopefully, never again. Hopefully, never Although again. versus Jay White at Wrestle Kingdom doesn't sound great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that uh, is true. The only thing I wish is it was uh, Kenta won a intercontinental number one contender because then you could have Jay White and Kenta stripping Naito of both his championships. That would be awesome, to be honest. I'd hate it, that would but very it would much be, be awesome. awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, um, best match of the night, without a doubt, the never open weight title. Just. If you like Japanese strong style folks, go back and watch that one. It's just badassery throughout the At that whole point, thing. you might as well watch the first match, seeing as that's the second match. Get yourself a well round out round, well rounded half hour of pro wrestling. You know what? I that's kind of I, I agree with you, Pacey. I think if you watch the first two matches on this, I think you're okay. Um, if you want to see what the Great Ocon is all about, you know, then then you can stick around for the third one, but. You wouldn't have to. I would definitely say those two matches would be fine. I recommend the uh, Kenta Hiroshi Tanahashi because it's kind of fun. But, yeah, you could watch just the first two and turn the pay-per-view off. And I I think you got a pretty good example of what's going on. Gave the entire pay-per-view a B. It was going to be better until the end, the the last. Boy, that was the story of this weekend. We'll get to that. But, man, the end of the pay-per-view is kind of finishes. For real. Um, there you go. That's my seven cents worth. I don't know. Hey, I don't know. The when you have a lackluster moment. finish and you still get a B, you're doing pretty fucking good. That is true. <laughs> that is very true. Finishes everything. And for both of these pay-per-views not to come out with terrible grades because of it is, is something, um, something to be remembered. Definitely. I think that's going to be something I hearken back to quite often. Right. <laughs> now for the pay-per-view I did watch, Fat Mac, AEW <laughs> Full Gear. And let me tell you, it was full gear right from the jump until about the fifth hour in, and then it was slow trodden through the mud. Yeah, yeah, they kind of went down a few gears after that. Uh, they did we do too many hours on this pay-per-view. It was, it was still... I'd say an easy watch, but by the end, I was like, God damn it. Yeah, I mean, they could have knocked a half hour or an hour off, but yeah, I don't know where you would have. I mean, I know where you would have, but. <laughs> Take out the Elite Deletion and put it on YouTube. There you go. Yeah, Seriously, I that would have been great. <laughs> I agree. So did you watch the buy-in? Yeah, actually, I did catch this match in the buy-in. Uh, it was the NWA World Women's Championship. Serena Deeb defended her gold against Allison K, defeating her by submission. And what was a pretty damn good match. I, I would say I hate that this woman's match was on the pre-show, but it's not even an AEW championship, so I get why that's your buy-in. It makes right. sense. And then, um, after the finish of this match, uh... What what was her name? The the former NWA Thunder Rosa Thunder yes, Rosa Thunder Rosa came back, and they didn't really clarify whether she's back with NWA or back as an AEW's talent. 
so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where that kind of falls unless there is definite news that I just missed out on. Yeah. I, as most times I usually skip all the pre-show and buy-ins, but after I heard that the uh, buy-in was the NWA world women's championship, I actually went back the next day and watched it. I, I really liked this match. Yeah. Uh, it's, it was a hell of a buy-in match. Um, you know, there was no story behind it, so that was kind of, that's probably the only thing that really kept it down was there wasn't much to keep you invested in it other than it's a title match. But D and K both looked great. Um, you know, they, they weren't a match that is better than watching most AEW women's matches, so it's, yeah, you got to give them credit. And I think that uh, Thunder Rosa's return sets up a good showdown with Deeb in the future, which I th- is just going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. Thunder Rose is going to be getting it back. I'm just saying that here. I'm not a, not a huge fan of Serena Deeb. No? I like I like Serena Deeb. I it's like all three of the women. pointy and more. angular. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> That's good. Uh, oh. Well, then we got into the actual pay-per-view pasty, and we got the Eliminator Tournament Finals. Kenny Omega defeated Hangman Adam Page. And this was a way great... to start the show. Holy oh, shit. Perfect way to start the pay-per-view. Perfect way. Omega and Page, they tore the house down. They had a hell of a match. Very physical. And you got the story built into it. The story's been building forever. There were counters and reversals that, you know, you would expect. These two guys... Know spent each how much other. time together. Exactly. And in the end, it was basically the veteran knowledge of the cleaner that allowed him to deliver that last gasp dragon screw leg whip and secure the victory. God, their grand finale run of counters was fucking amazing. The attempted finish after attempted finish and the dodges. And... God damn. And Kenny Omega, very... and they worked together so well. Like, their finishes look like they're legit doing them, like. More than most superstars can pull off. Right. And, of course, with uh, Omega's win here, that puts him in line for a shot against John Moxley coming up next. Well, coming up on the Dynamite for whatever reason, which is well, weird. Well, it's because they don't, their next pay-per-view isn't until February. Okay. they got to keep yeah. story going. I guess I'd like to. Plus, I would, I would assume favorite. after New Year's, their whole their brackets reset. You know, everybody's record resets for the next year, so it has to be before the New Year's up here. Yeah, but they don't like strip everybody of all the titles and everything. No. I mean, right. you can have a you can have a John Moxley Kenny Omega story run from now until I would love to see one through from November through February. I think that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. But I guess a lot of fans don't like that kind of long build, so I get it. And, uh, well, I mean, uh, post this pay-per-view, they did the the media scrum, and Tony Khan did say that they wanted to have a lot of really big shows to finish out the year for Dynamite. So I'm I'm anticipating some good shit. And and this week's Dynamite did did wonders, I think. It was a good show. Hell yeah. Um, Yeah, I give this one an A-. I very, very much thought it was a great way to start it out. I don't let her grade my matches, but yeah, this was probably the perfect way to start the show. Maybe the tag team championships, but it's hard to say. Right. Maybe maybe the whole show would have felt slow in plotting it if it would have opened. You know. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Could have saved that for the main event, actually. Yeah. Well, this was a stellar matchup. I can't wait to see, you know, Omega with the championship and Hangman challenging for it. That is going to be um, the match of legends. I think it's going to make this look like nothing in comparison. So, so that'll be fun down the road. Yeah. And then we had Orange Cassidy defeating John Silver in what was supposed to be your buy-in match. But once again, the fans spoke up. And uh, John Silver got some real pay-per-view experience. And this is just, I love this. I love this because it let Orange Cassidy kind of go back to being his comedy gimmick. And these two played so well together. This was a fun, funny match. 
And I love John Silver. I uh, I gotta disagree with you. I thought this really I was expecting this to be kind of a John Silver showcase, and I felt like it kind of failed in that regards. And Orange Cassidy, I thought this would have been a good one for him to kind of do his his, his sticky stuff, and he did a little bit, but not a whole lot. I don't know. I thought that I thought this was the place for Silver is so charismatic, yeah, you know. Yeah. I thought that this would be the place for him to really come out, I thought, okay, they're putting him on the main show, they got something good. I, I think he underperformed. I'm a big fan of his. Again, this doesn't change my opinion of him or Orange Cassidy. I loved them both, but uh, I don't know if it was because it followed the last match that was so great or what, but it just did, it did not work for me, personally. I was kind of bummed. Yeah. No, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing John Silver be able to you know stand on his own two feet some more and, and get some some on dynamite in ring time, at least. Um, right. He deserves it. Uh, I think that guy could run your, your TNT championship division for quite a long time on the charisma alone. Yeah. He's going to do great as once he leaves the dark order. I wouldn't mind seeing him have a program with Brody Lee, to be honest, you know, I want it. I don't want it anytime soon. I love him no. being a bad guy. I love he's like the perfect goon for the for the comic book villain squad that is Dark Order. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would agree. But I definitely think his future is super bright. Uh might even be more bright than Orange Cassidy's in, in my opinion at this point. But only time will tell. Only time will tell. And pasty it was time for the AEW TNT Championship. And I think we all seen it coming, but we all still gave a round of applause. And then when Darby Allen picked up the win over Cody Rhodes and got his first singles, got his first championship gold in the company. Yes, he did. And then about cried like a baby afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Darby. I thought you didn't feel anything. <laughs> No, I thought this you was a good match. This is not the first time we've seen Allen versus Rhodes. No. Well, I guess it is. It's it, it's not the first time we've seen Allen versus Cody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boy, and they sure are pushing that Rhodes name, aren't they? All over uh, Dynamite. <laughs> Rhodes, Cody Rhodes, Cody Rhodes, Rhodes. <laughs> Man, he got it. He's, He's going to get it tattooed on the other side of his neck. Yeah. I guess the uh, I guess the adage that he he want he was happy with just being Cody and doesn't want to use the Rhodes name in AEW is probably out the window. That was just <laughs> to get the leverage, so he had to give less of his father's copyrighted material back to WWE for it. Right, you, know, you undervalue it that way; they don't know what your real value for it is. Yeah, uh, no, this, this was so much fun, and I liked that it was kind of Rhodes' self pride that really cost him the match. I mean. He, he he allowed Allen to continue to to go on to the point that he just left an opening and Darby Allen snatched. I thought this was wrestled very smart. I thought it told a good story. It built sympathy for Allen, I think, to the point that at the end, I think almost every fan wanted to see him win, even if going in they hadn't. You know what I mean? They yeah. really told the story. I, I'll give Cody credit on this one. I'm I'm always not the biggest Cody fan, but I give credit where credit's due, and he really helped tell this story, I felt. I think so. Another thing of note in this match is I think this is the first time. They've talked about it for months, how Cody's been putting on weight to try to get into the heavyweight class, whatever. But this is the first match I've actually noticed his change in size. And it's not a massive change, but Darby Allin and Cody were pretty comparable when AEW first started. And this, this felt like a very different match. For sure. And then I think almost just as much as the match itself, the uh, post-match. You had Rhodes presenting the title to Allen. That was kind of cool. But then you had uh, Brian Cage and Ricky Starks come out and attack the two guys. And then kind of stare at each other over the championship, like who's going to be the next one. That's good stuff. Yeah. So I'm 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 assuming 
Allen may get a 